Hey guys, this is Maduba John from MJC Designs. Welcome to today's video tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to create a, can I call it walkway or footpath, whatever it is, but let me show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like, curved like this. And this part here, you intend to have pebbles, and this is the footpath, curved like so. So the interesting thing about this is not creating the curve. The interesting thing here now is getting this cut straight like this which is going to be very difficult if we have to create this draw all this one by one so this is the essence of this particular video but if i jump into the video i want to show you guys something that i've put out on um seller for those that are interested in downloading some of our objects or element that we have created for future use whenever you want to use it such as our tv console we have five unique tv media wall archical 25 model okay you can see them this you can easily download on our seller and we also have gate and fence you can easily download this for a very very affordable rate and reuse in your 3d this comes in archicad um, format which is archicad 25 so all you need to do is when you download you see all these things you can just always copy and paste on your project so let's jump right into our video okay first thing first you have to get the curve and it's always easy to get the curve i might not actually draw this same curve but i'm going to use a curve for you so i'm just going to go down here all right and we take spline so i'll just you know move like so like so let's just keep it here okay now that's it uh this is too much for so we are going to now offset this here just make a copy of it Control shift d or Control d Control. so i'm going to make it one five and then what we do now is take a line and close this up so that we can easily use so that we can easily use our slab and get the shape so we trim it you just hold down your control down and cut it all right so that's it that's the curve now it's very easy to create all this curve but the most important challenge here is this okay now haven't done this and closed it we are going to take our slab and just hold down your space and select that shape you have created. It will take the part you can see. Now the next challenge is um, that line. If we want to do it manually, we can always do like this, which is going to be very, very tasking, cutting them like, uh, like this, okay? Like so. And it won't be easy to follow the curve like that. So there is a faster method to do this. First thing first is I will use a beam for this and go here, check the beam settings. I used this before, so this depth is okay for me. So I might just increase it. And then the width is 200, which, I, which is what I wanted to use. So I'll just draw one like so and then take it back. Okay, and then take it, take, um, let's say, 218, 18 distance, this is too short. Let's use 2,500, okay, so that's it. So put it at the right position center here like this so let's see what we have in terms of where they connect okay so we need to raise this up as you can see so we need to put it at the center somewhere around there which is this is fine let me just take it up again so the next thing is duplicating this here around this part we are going to just select this select it again so this appears Head palette and then you click multiply okay so we make sure this is activated drag and we want to spread it okay 
Now, in case you open this and this is not activated, make sure you click it, pick part, pick part before input. Make sure you click this, okay? So, and then you just leave it at this point here. Now, I think, do you know, I've forgotten the, the measurement we took for this distance. Let me check it over again. Two five. So I want to do, click this and go back to this. And then two five. We did two five. So we are going to add the 200 width of that line. So it will be two seven. Okay. Haven't clicked this. And this is, should be here. Then we say, okay. And then try to load it a little bit. So we are going to click the part. You can see it has selected the part and you drag it a little bit out. Then you, you start moving around, as you can see. From what this looks like, I think the part is not, the line is not big enough. So I'm going to reduce it. I'm going to increase it rather. So it will be to exceed it. Let's do that operation again. This is already selected and we just say, okay. Then we try to pick the part. Okay, it's trying to pick the part. So it takes a little time. Now I haven't selected the part. Just click, drag a little out. Okay, I'm going to drag a little to this extent and then I'll just move it like so. Just move so that is fine as you can see so you know doing this one by one will be very difficult so this is the fastest way to do it now having done this i'm going to make sure everything is selected and you group it Control g group it that is the purpose for grouping it so we're going to see what we have in our 3d but before that let me make a copy of this out just in case i might need it later let's view this in our 3d so we are going to have grouped this, make sure this is um, suspended, you want to suspend it, and then I'm going to convert it to morph. It's always easier for this operation that I want to do. So convert this to morph. This is the operator. So you convert this to morph, okay? Haven't converted to morph. Now let's do the main thing. Then you select this, okay? Right click say connect and you say solid element operation okay now that is the target that's what we want to retain as the that's the target okay then this one here it's grouped that's the essence of grouping so we don't start picking them one by one and then you say add as operator okay we have 18 numbers of it then you go to the choose operation we have, want to use this subtract. We want to subtract that morph away from the shape, away from um, the target. So you say subtract, okay, and then you say execute. Now it has been done. So the next thing we do is we are going to hide this, okay, so we can see it. Now I've created the layer for it, just in case you don't know how to create layer. I'll go to document layer layer model view and then here just say create new and when you create new you type the name okay when you type the name it will just add to all these layers here so i have created a name which is called operator i'm going to look for it right now this is operator so it would you when you type the name you find some we signed it around here based on the alphabetical order so this you are going to make sure it is turned off this i here you it turned off when you click it like this turn it off because it is going to help us hide that particular element so you say okay all right that's how to create a layer so i'm going to click this and change the layer to operator just press o take you to o and this is the operator and there you go you have successfully created this um part here now that's not all just in case Okay, just in case, because when you leave it like this, it means that this is where it is going to be permanently. When you shift it, this operation disappears. Okay, just like this. Let's shift it here. So you can see. I'm going to shift it again. You can see. So 
it's disappeared. It means that that operator is still there, just that we made it invisible from the layer. So this year, we have to be here permanently. But if you don't want, if you want to move it, you want to be able to move it away from here, then you have to change this to morph. And when you change it to morph, you cannot edit it again. Uh, you have to make sure that you are not going to edit this again. You're sure of what you want to do and that's it now. So if you want to be able to move it, you have to convert to morph. So just select and convert to morph and say, okay. So you can see they are now one entity. You can suspend the group and see they are now one entity. And it's always difficult to create things like this one by one. Okay, you can see here the uh, it's now showing. So you can always um, drag to where you want it to be or wherever you want it to be. So that was how I was able to drag this here that I created here and I put it here. Now this one here, this one here for the stone, all I did was duplicate this here, okay? So you can see that's the essence of duplicating it. I now added, um, you can use slab or you can use mesh. So I, I intend to use mesh based on the type of software I use for rendering. I want to use just a single plane, okay? So mesh and I'll take the object, the same way, hold down your space and take the shape. So if I want to select my mesh, I will press my tab so that I can be able to select the mesh take it to the shape and then just offset it a little bit like so. So I'm going to offset it by 300 like this. And let's see what we have. So I'm going to change this to single plane and take this underneath here. Okay, and then we change it to stone. That's the stone right there. So this is it, okay? It's pretty easy. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye-bye.